Welcome, welcome, welcome to Smith Coating and Design. This week we decided to experiment with epoxy resin. I made this Pokeball ashtray for my brother. For the most part it came out alright. You'll notice when we get into the Tormach operations that I actually decided to cut the 6061 dry. So that was new. I decided to do that for filming purposes. For the most part the finishes came out okay. I am not satisfied with the surface finish on the back. It turns out the shell mill did not like cutting dry, so in the future I will avoid that. Overall the epoxy went in smooth and it seems to be holding up fine. We'll go over that in a few minutes. So hold on tight and now we'll get into the machining. Alright, now we'll get into the actual machining of the ashtray. So we'll start with the first setup. I ended up breaking this into three operations or three setups because I wasn't sure how well I could get the epoxy to go inside of the channels I cut for the Pokeball without getting it all over the top surface. So to start with Op 1, we do a facing operation just to give us a nice smooth surface. We then do a 3D adaptive where we go in and hog out most of the material as fast as we can. We then do a 2D contour where we are just cleaning up the outside and finishing it. We do two pocketing operations with a 1 8 inch end mill where we are going in and creating the Pokeball itself. We then get into another 2D adaptive where we are just creating these channels on the upper rim of the part as well as a 2D contour we are finishing the edges of those channels and then we are going to do a 2D chamfer path where we go in and we break all the upper edges of the part just to make sure there are no sharp surfaces that might cut your hand Again, I broke this up into three offs because I wasn't sure how messy the epoxy would be going in. So really the second off or setup is just going in with a 3 8 inch end mill and cleaning up the bottom of the ashtray and the side walls. Finally, we move into the final operation where we flip the part. Notice my probe point is the same. It is on the upper left corner of the soft jaw. So we do another adaptive clearing where we go ahead and we remove um, most of the material. So you see that there. Then we do a facing operation to again try to give us a smooth, nice finish on the back of the ashtray. And finally, another contour, sorry, another chamfer where we break the edge around the back of the part just to make sure it isn't sharp and we remove any burrs. All right, here we're coming in with the shell mill. Again, cutting dry, all that's there is air blast, running at 40 inches per minute, 20,000 steps to cut, and we're at 50% diameter of the tool and step over, which is 750 thousandths. Now again, if you look closely, I'm not impressed with the surface finish when I'm cutting dry with a shell mill. When I cut with a shell mill using coolant, the surface finish is beautiful so just keep that in mind all right now we get into the roughing I'm using a 3 8 gorilla chin breaker end mill 60 inches per minute 750 thousandths in the depth of cut so full depth of cut of the part running an optimal load of 30 thousandths and again here we're just trying to move as much material as possible it's a long operation, so we're just going to kind of transition in and out to some of the parts that are more interesting in the toolpath. Now we're nearing into the contouring operation. We're going nice and slow, again using a 3 8 in mill. This time it's a 3 flute Gorilla Silverback, 30 inches per minute, full depth of cut at 750 thousandths and the width of cut is 20 thousandths. We're just cleaning up the excess stock we left on the side walls. Now we're performing our second 3D adaptive clearing. This time with a quarter inch Shars end mill. We're going 30 inches per minute, an eighth of an inch depth of cut 
and 20 thou optimal load we're just going in and cleaning up those areas where we couldn't get the 3 8 inch tool to fit now the roughing operations take a long time so we will transition the various parts of the tool path just to speed the video along now we're transitioning into a 2D contour with the quarter inch Shars end mill running 30 inches per minute, an eighth of an inch depth of cut, and 20 thou width of cut. We're just cleaning up our side walls trying to leave a smooth surface finish. Now we get into the pocketing operation to create the outline of the Pokeball. I'm using a Shars 1 eighth inch end mill, 15 inches per minute, and a 30 thousandths depth of cut. We take it nice and slow. I was worried about tool deflection for two reasons. The first one being the small diameter of the tool and the second reason being I needed the tool to be long. So the flute length on this particular 1 8 inch end mill is 3 quarters of an inch and I needed that so I could reach inside over the walls of the ashtray and be able to cut that pokeball out. Overall it went well and I was able to make the outline of the pokeball without any issues without breaking a tool or running into any sort of deflection issues that might have deformed the outline All right, now we get into the epoxy pour. So I was a little concerned I would get epoxy all over the place. Luckily, that did not happen. We start with a black epoxy. I'm using a syringe, and we're just going around the outside of the Pokeball, trying not to get any air bubbles, and also trying, again, not to make a mess. The syringe actually worked well. So if I could go back again, I would have finished the pocket or the bottom of the ashtray before I put the epoxy in. So you'll see in the tool path after this, I go in and I clean up the bottom or the inside of the ashtray after installing the epoxy. And I did that because I was afraid that I would get epoxy on the bottom surfaces. So I figured if I did a cleanup tool path afterwards, I would be able to, you know, make the surfaces finishes nice. All right. So now we go into more epoxy. This is the scarlet for the top of the pokeball. And we switched to my wife. Her hands are steadier, so she went ahead and put the epoxy in the upper and lower half of the Pokeball. Just again to make sure that I didn't make a mess. And we finish off by using some white epoxy. Unfortunately, this white epoxy was more clear than white. So if I could do it again, I would have used a different mica powder to color the epoxy but for now I use what I had it, it came out pretty good so not too worried about it all right now we're running our second op where we go in and we clean up the bottom of the ashtray you'll notice I already have the epoxy poured I did that because I wasn't sure how well I would be able to get the epoxy inside the pokeball without getting any on the top surface so I figured I would go ahead let the epoxy set and then clean up that bottom surface just in case so I could get rid of any type of imperfections and then I go on and finish the side walls which I thought the surface finish inside of the ashtray turned out well for milling dry Again, this is my first time cutting anything without any coolant. I get far better surface finishes when I use coolant. I think what I'm going to do is order some coated end mills and see if that approves the surface finishes at all. Overall, it went well. Again, I also had a fear that I might end up in a situation where the aluminum would stick to the flutes and kind of clog up the end mill. Luckily, that was not the case. Alright, now we're on to the third op where we actually flip the part over and we go ahead and remove the top hat of material. You notice there's a rather thick top hat. I don't have a bandsaw. I ordered my stock pre-cut at this point in time. 
So I just use the stock that I have. I typically order it a little larger than what I need. That way I can do various projects. We're using the Gorilla Chimp Breaker end mill again. 3 8 inch shank diameter, three flutes. It has chip breakers, handles about everything I've thrown at it. We're running 60 inches per minute with a 30 thou optimal low full depth of cut. I'm going to finish up now with a facing operation. We're using the Toramox shell mill again, 40 inches per minute, 20 thou depth of cut, and 50% diameter width of cut, which is 750 thousandths. Again, I wasn't impressed with the surface finishes using the shell mill cutting dry. I wish I would have used coolant just for the sake of getting a beautiful surface finish. My plan is next time I will most likely just go ahead and use a standard end mill to face the back of the part if I cut dry. I'm debating whether sticking with cutting dry or moving back to coolant. I like cutting dry because the video quality is better, but again, I do get superb surface finishes when I use coolant. Thanks for tuning in. Please like and subscribe. This video is more of a summary. I plan on breaking up all of the individual cam operations into separate videos, and we will go over those next.